Here we are uh, on the Guardian Project, the Engard. Do you know, can you say Engard? Let me see how, how, how you say it. Engard. Engard. Yes, yeah, see, I, I, I think that's but Engard, not Engard. Engard. <laughs> so we're here to joust. Um, no, we're here to, uh, to sort of say hello and goodbye to you uh, in our work with you, um, Casey, and the time you've spent at Guardian Project. And, um, I don't know. I can't. I'm never good with dates and how long it's been, but it feels like years um, <laughs> because you've had a lot of impact. But um, and what I want to do today is just talk about some of the projects that you contributed to during your time with us and um, get your thoughts on working in Internet Freedom and Human Rights as a designer mm -hmm. and maybe hear a little bit about, you know, introduce yourself um, to our community as you are also moving in another direction in life. But, um, and yeah, and first, thank you really for all the contributions. I, I think it really made a visible impact for sure, but I think continued to add kind of excellence and sophistication and quality to everything we try to do through your work in engaging at the UI, UX, and design usability layer. So thank you for that. And what, so to step back, I mean, what, what brought you to working in design and to specifically being at OK Thanks, our great design partner? Um, you know, without, we don't need a whole life story, but maybe <laughs> just roll back a little bit. Tell what you're comfortable sharing is what I mean. Yeah. Um, so I started out um, in uh, the marketing advertising world. Um, and I live in a not very big town in West Texas in Lubbock. And uh, we were just, I had hit a kind of a roadblock at my previous job and realized that marketing wasn't something that I wanted to do. And um, I randomly met Carrie at a yoga class and <laughs> she was hiring a designer. Um, I would had a bit of introduction to user experience, specifically just for web design at that point in the marketing world, um, we didn't really do app design or development. So uh, web design, I'd had a bit of instruction to that and wanted to learn more. And she happened to know a lot. So I met her at yoga and then I became her employee. <laughs> The work that you jumped into with us, is, as we are known for, is was really focused on mobile, um, and which is a whole you know unique thing beyond web or print design or other kinds of advertising design and interaction design and, and at the level we were talking about in the way that we I mean it's not like we're old we we aren't old hands at it I mean Carrie really also changed our work when she started working with us as well and we'd always cared about. Um, having good looking usable apps, but you know, we can only take it so far. What made it, I mean, how do you feel your, or where do you feel your own intuition and kind of skill set working on mobile came from? And was that something that, you know, you had had some experience with and maybe how did it change coming into a human rights context for you? Yeah, I, I had zero experience with mobile design, but I had a lot of experience with mobile use. Um, and I had a lot of experience with web design. So I think um, just having that understanding first and foremost of how elements work together on a page and how to lead someone's eye from left to right, top to bottom and attract their eye where they need to go um, really helped. In mobile, uh, there was definitely a learning curve, especially learning about Android, because I've always had an iPhone. Um, but and then learning how like different um, platforms 
work completely differently. Like what um, is a standard design on iOS is not the same as it is on Android. And so yeah, I think there, there was a learning curve at the beginning. Um, but eventually I think just knowing how to, um, handle design, even if it's on web, um, can translate. It's, it's, it, I don't want to say it's not that hard, but, but it translated pretty well. Um, uh, always less is more and, um, make it clear and pretty is kind of the way to go. Um. And not pretty, but, you know, good looking. Um, the Jack Kevmer started again <laughs> for our listeners. We're doing our best. Um, the street work is essential, so they are working away outside, yes. apparently. Um, your, I mean, pretty is, another word that I've often used is sort of smooth, right? Mm-hmm. There's these, these un- intangible or hard to grasp ideas about what makes people respond. And I, you know, I mean, one of your experiences working with us was on, um, Circulo, mm-hmm. right? Circulo, um, which is a safety app where people are using it under duress, but we also want to make it pretty, you know? Yeah. And, um, how did your, I mean, coming from a marketing environment and I'm asking because, you know, part of what we want our more people like yourself who can come into working in our space, right? More folks mm-hmm. that have skills, creativity, understand aesthetic, but can be brought in to improve, I mean, to scale up the skill set for design in a human rights context, right? And so when you were encountered with like, it needs to be pretty, but it also needs to consider these five other things like being used under duress or being used, you know, in where the phone itself is, you know, not safe, for instance, or where the person's not physically safe. How, how did you feel about encountering those, you know, requirements? These are new kinds of requirements. Um, and how did that impact your thinking? Yeah, I mean, it definitely kind of hit a whole new level of understanding your user, for sure. Um, I think there's been like a background of you need to know your demographic and who's going to be using what you're designing um and then whenever we bring in kind of the scenarios that users for circular would be in you know you don't necessarily want to make something really fun looking for them but you want it to be really easy and you want it to be aesthetically pleasing without them realizing it's aesthetically pleasing so kind of understated um, you don't want it to be obviously difficult and it needs to add zero stress to the situation that they're already in. So that kind of comes back to the less is more. Um, you can still have a consistent brand and have a very like bold, but also calm feel to a product, um, where things aren't really, Simple is a hard word. Um, Easy to look at without being forgettable. Yeah, I mean, you think about um, another app that you worked on, Spotlight, um, which is now called We Clock, um, which is, you know, an interesting... It's like also this... these, this, um, bifurcation a super complex concept that we want someone to be able to almost forget about you know Mm -hmm. and you know or or similarly with proof mode where it's just like this thing that can achieve so much yet we don't want it to intimidate them and we want them to almost you know to activate it and then put it away you know or Mm -hmm. to hide layers of complexity you know and right and um i think with both you know with um with we clock and and circulo i think we've ach- we've achieved that um and though you know we had to go through many many iterations of course to get there and i guess that's aside from your own kind of skill the other thing that, that okay thanks who you know you work for and is our design partner um has brought to our work is that sort of process or the ability not that we 
maybe never had done that before, but the, just the capacity to engage in this in a useful, meaningful way so that we can go through multiple iterations. Maybe what were some of the things that we did on Spotlight, you know, that you can remember in terms of getting to where we were? I mean, what is, the, aside, you know, I mean, I think back to some of the vision boards or mm -hmm. some of the imaging or some of the content, but also just, you know, the process where we went from the, the, the app that I built, which was like a raw data app to mm -hmm. something that had like, I remember seeing the first time the sort of menu of studies with visualizations and some of these things. So I don't know, do you, what, were, what are your memories of that process and going through so many iterations? Yeah, I remember... And, and I, I want to add first that I think one of the big things about the design for something like this is that um, if you don't have an understanding of like the final use of the app, that it's really easy to get caught up in making it pretty or wanting everything to look a certain way, when in reality, um, the goal is at the end of the day, we want 